Today is August 3rd, 2011, and we are in, in, interviewing Mr. James Bailey at the Gilmer County Historical Society about his military service. Could you please give me your full name as it is recorded on your birth certificate? James Stephen Bailey. Okay. Do you have a nickname, sir? Jim. All right. Is that what you would have been known um, in the military? No, Beetle Bailey, usually. Okay. Um, is there origination, you know, for that nickname? Yeah, Beetle Bailey, the cartoon the character. The cartoon character? Yes. Who originally do you think uh, may have said that to you first? Somebody in basic training, maybe John Anderson, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Some guys were hanging around, and of course they, I looked kind of looked a little bit like Beetle Bailey, in short and baggy pants and the hat over the eyes, and uh -huh. so that's the way it was. Okay. Stuck with me for 20 years. Not anymore, though. <laughs> uh -huh. um, where did you attend basic training at? Lackland Air Force Base, Texas. Okay. Um, and that would have been in? 1962 and part of 63. Okay. Um, do you have any specific memories of basic training or just an, an overall opinion of, of your uh, experiences there? Well, in, in general, of course, Texas is very hot. Uh -huh. We uh, basic training. We stayed in open bay barracks, 50, 50 men to a, a barracks. Mm -hmm. With uh, open bay means we all lived together and we all shared together, and you know, there was no privacy. Mm -hmm. And the um, of course it was ventilated by a big fan or just the, through the windows lifting these, uh, I guess, partitions up in the layer through. Uh huh. Kind of hot, but it wasn't strenuous. Uh -huh. And I, uh, after basic training, well, after five weeks, I started technical school there at Blackland Air Force Base. It was cryptographic communications maintenance. Okay. And that's where the, the tech school was. It was a modern facility. Uh huh. And uh, spent almost a year there. To For training? For training and finishing basic up. When I went to tech school, we had the last three weeks, so we. Go out and march around a little bit. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, where were you born and raised, sir? Glenville, West Virginia. And I was born in Glenville, over the old Shackleford building down here where the movie theater is on Lewis Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived uh, many different places up through my first 14 years. I started kindergarten, I finished kindergarten here in Glenville. And Started the first grade, and my father became ill and had to go to the Veterans Hospital, so we moved to Weston. Mm -hmm. And I finished the first grade there and uh, went to Jane Lou. Mom knew some people there, and we stayed there for a year. I went to second grade there, and the third grade in Normantown, and part of the fourth grade here in Glenville Elementary, and uh, finished the fourth through the seventh over at Tanner. School, okay. And the eighth grade of Troy. And then we moved to Morgantown, West Virginia. I was 14. Okay. Um, when did you come back to Glenville? Uh, about 1990. Okay. After you, you'd retired from the Air Force, right? I retired and I had some property in Calhoun County and I built a log cabin down there and stayed there for a few years and I enrolled at Glenville State up here in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in 83 and got a teaching degree in social studies and, and uh, in English. Mm -hmm. Did student teaching in Calhoun County. So. Was you ever able to use the GI Bill? For yes. Yeah. Okay. I uh, um, managed to call the bootstrap program in the Air Force and I'd accumulated enough hours, some hours I had at WVU and and put together enough hours to finish a degree in six months, so they sent me to Kansas City, Missouri, a little place called Park College, uh -huh. and I finished a degree in political science there in 1970. Um, so you didn't have to uh, attend very many classes up here to get your... Well, I did. They didn't accept... <laughs> oh, they didn't accept the transfer? Many things. Uh -huh. You know, I had lots of, they call it night school or, you know, on base education from uh -huh. University of Maryland, University of Oklahoma, and University of Nebraska. But they didn't like the the education courses that I'd taken. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, uh, 
Um, what was your first duty um, or duty station after you left your uh, initial training you were speaking of before? I was sent to Wakanai Air Station. Excuse me. Take that back. It was Fuchu Air Station in Japan. It was near Tokyo. Uh-huh. It was a very small base, 5th Air, Air Force Headquarters. Okay. Um, how long was you at that first duty station? I was there about... Mm, about 16 months, okay. 17 months. Um, and they needed some people, some of our, my, my uh, career field, to go to uh, Taiwan, Taipei, Taiwan. Uh -huh. So we finished the, the last quarter, the last five months or so in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to say about that experience? That first experience out of out of your training. Yeah, it was a it was a good job. You know, the career field I was in, cryptographic communications, everything was in air condition uh, maintenance headquarters or, or a building of some kind. Mm -hmm. and it was uh, highly specialized, and we got proficiency pay, an extra thirty dollars a month because we were a critical career field. Uh -huh. for most of my career. And uh, yeah, you have to work with a bunch of bright kids and good supervision, good training. I enjoyed it. Uh -huh. It was kind of naive at the time, and I remember sitting in the barracks upstairs uh, watching TV, and uh, it's in November, and uh, suddenly President Kennedy had been shot. That's one little memory I have mm -hmm. that uh, most people do. What were you doing? Well, I was just hanging out. and. Uh, that made an impression on everybody, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, can you describe a little bit about what the job entailed that you, you were mentioning? Yeah, cryptographic communications, especially the maintenance and the operations of it, was uh, encrypting plain text information, whether it was voice or teletype mm -hmm. or digital, mm -hmm. and transmitting that and, of course, receiving it, but it would scramble it. So it would do it encrypted and then, uh -huh. then decrypted. So it's just safeguarding our national security through encryption. There's a lot of the equipment we had. We went to school for that over the years, different pieces of equipment uh -huh. and lots of different, different ancillary equipment like modems and things like that. How was this encrypted um, information sent across to its... It's, Well, It could be any number of ways. I mean, it could be some of us uh, kind of fancy troposcatter stuff, you know, would send out a signal. Mm -hmm. there. Some of it went by landlines, by cable, and a lot of it uh, just various radio signals and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. voice encryption. Okay. Is that the uh, job that, uh, that you participated in the majority of your career? The whole career. I was in the same career field. The first seven years or so, a good part of that was just as a regular technician. Mm -hmm. And then in my last ten years, maybe a little bit more than that, I was more in a management role. Mm -hmm. Quality control, maintenance control, and uh, headquarters level, doing uh -huh. inspections and things. Uh -huh. okay. um, and you enlisted, correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you chose the Air Force. Is there, um, first off, what led you to join the military? Did you have family? Well, my next door neighbor, he joined. He enlisted in the Air Force, and when he came home on his first leave from Lackland Air Force Base, when he was in training, he said, Jim, if you join anything, join the Air Force, and I'd recommend applying for electronics hopefully you can get into cryptographic communication because it's easy and it's a good a good career field to get into. So that's what I did. Okay. And I took my exams, you know, I made it apparent that I wanted to be in that career field and so I had a qualifying score in electronics. And he was still there when I got down there and uh -huh. of course he had to be there a year. So, uh, so how